Hello folks and welcome LMDE5. I'm going to be talking a little bit about software today. Now there are three different ways to install software which would be terminal which I'm not going to talk about today and there's uh, two other package managers. Uh, one that you probably are familiar with if you used uh, LMDE5 for more than a couple hours which is the software manager. But there's another one in there too called Synaptic Package Manager. I'm going to cover some basics on that. I'm going to talk about uh, also changing from your regular repositories to a different mirror, for instance, in case you're having some hangups on your updater. And I'll talk about the software sources, where they're coming from, and uh, also I'll talk a little bit about Flatpak software in this video. In either case, folks, welcome. Today I'm filming in uh, 3840 by 2160. If you're watching this on a mobile device, it may be too small for you. However, you can probably investigate looking at your video player on your device, which whether it's a computer or a mobile device, and click that gearbox and uh, see if you can change the re resolution to whatever fits you. Uh, all my videos are over two minutes, but they all have chapters and timelines. I also encourage that you read my about section and go look at my community tab for additional information if you're looking for other material on different videos, because my library has over 100. That way you got some search tips in there because all my videos are keyword indexed. So welcome folks. And then I'll close this down and talk about software today. So let's start with the basic. We're going to talk about software manager. Again, I'm not going to cover installing software through terminal. I'm going to talk about the point and click stuff. Let me get Flatpak software out of the way. Flatpak software comes from flathub.org. You can actually visit that website. Flatpak software is software that normally runs in a sandboxed environment. So there's two versions of GIMP, for instance. And you'll see that. If you type in GIMP, for instance, this will give you an example of that. You'll see that the regular Linux Mint version and the Flathub version. All right, so that's one example of doing searches. Under the um, hamburger menu, you have the about. Another name for Mint install is Software Manager. It doesn't really tell me how many pieces of software there is, and, but I'm going to show you another way to find that out. Minus Flatpak software. You can also do searches. And today I'm going to actually, um, I deinstalled it, but I'm going to reinstall Variety for this, app, for this distribution. Variety is an automatic wallpaper changer. I'm going to click on it here and let you see that there's no screenshot here. So when I get into Synaptic, I'll show you a screenshot of this thing and install it from there instead of here. So far, so good. All right. But a lot of people focus in on Software Manager and never go into Synaptic Package Manager. And I want to encourage that you actually investigate this on your own. So I'm going to put an SY in my search field and open up Synaptic Package Manager because it does have a wealth of information. So my fictitious user for today is Bob. I have lots of systems that I have different um, users on them, and but these are all fictitious systems, but they have software installed. But uh, in either case, I will point down to the bottom left corner that says 61,712 packages are listed. In other words, pieces of software. 2277 are installed. I'm circling down here in the corner. So. Synaptic Package Manager. I'm not going to cover all the settings today, but I will cover some of the basic ones, like under Help, like what are your icon legends? If they're blank, that means they're not installed, and the different derivatives of those colors. The other thing I'm going to talk about is uh, under Preferences, I do encourage that you activate that. I'll show you why in a little bit. And then I'll talk about the repos, or where's the stuff coming from. But before I do that, I'm going to do the search feature. Now, this normally defaults to description and name. So if you're looking for something with a name on it, my suggestion is maybe start with a name only, if you know how to spell it. And I do. Or at least I'll try to. All right, Variety is an automatic wallpaper changer. Today is April 3. So what I'm going to click that is I'm going to get the screenshot for it. And when the screenshot pulls up, this is not my desktop. Just wanted to clarify that. So I'm waiting for it to pull. So this is not October 25 at 2340. It's April 3. Anyways, so we are talking about um, 
the variety preference box. Okay, and then you can also add your own folders. I'll show you that in a minute too. Show you all that stuff. This is a screenshot nonetheless. So we're gonna install that. I'm gonna click that and mark it for installation and then I'm gonna hit apply. Now, sometimes what happens, you'll get another dialog box that says, hey, it needs something else. Then go ahead and just answer the questions and then let it install. Okay. So mine is complaining that it's uh, unsandboxed as root, but that's okay. We're just going to deal with the installation process. And uh, more importantly, I'm going to minimize that for a second and go look for it. Now, since I installed this earlier, it may have some remnants of old files. But normally when you install this and click on it, it'll ask you a couple of questions. And in my case, it didn't do that because I installed it already before. But in general, it'll ask you, uh, we're gonna place it in your panel bar. It'll show you a picture of your panel bar and this icon. And then you just answer some questions and you'll be done. So this is Variety, it's an automatic wallpaper changer. It has a preference box and you can uh, actually, uh, this is currently paused. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove that folder because it held my other uh, information earlier. So these are all sources and some of these are coming off the internet. And normally when you click on like Bing, for instance, you'll have two photos and then it builds a library and then you can pick, pick from these things. So I'm going to close this briefly and uh, let you see that I can, I can actually see where this is coming from because it's not coming from my system. This is view at Bing. And it tells me the location. It's uh, East Java, Indonesia, for instance. So it's a cool little feature. All right. So you can also add your own folders by hitting add and up to 10,000 images per folder. I only have the one wallpaper as a demo today. So right now it shows me uh, all the stuff in there and even the pictures going sideways, it auto corrects. You can see that right there that it auto corrected that photo for wallpaper and I got some weird stuff too anyways um, so if I leave that unchecked I should be able to close down this what I call the previewer and right click on my screen and change the background to the Linux Mint one and it should remain here as long as I have this paused even with it installed all right now with that said the green box is installed let's talk about this option right here with that option turned on, I, what I can do is click on the actual installed package or software and go find out all kinds of information on it. First of all, screenshot, yes. But I, I can also find out common information. Who's the maintainer? Who's maintaining the software? It's even got the guy's email address. How about dependencies? What is it dependent on? What other pieces of software does it need to make it work? There's your dependencies. And you can see a lot of them are Python 3. Where is it located on my hard drive? Well, this is more information that some people need, but I thought I'd present this anyways. This is the locations of where that stuff is on your hard drive. Maybe too much information for some. In either case, I wanted just to let you see this under Synaptic Package Manager. All right, let's go look at settings repositories. In other words, where's the stuff coming from? You can look at it look at this dialog box here or you can look at it in a different way. So I just want to let you see that it's located here and it's also located here by right clicking on your screen, sorry your panel bar and system settings or go to your mint menu and click system settings. It doesn't matter how you get here. Scroll all the way to the bottom and look at software sources and then put in your password. My fictitious user is Bob and hopefully I remembered what Bob's password is but that's the same dialog box that I brought up earlier in Synaptic. So you have your main packages coming from Mint and then your base packages are coming from Debian because LMDE5 is a Debian based system. Linux Mint 21 on the other hand comes from Ubuntu. All right. However, let's say you were doing an update. You opened up the updater and you've got, um, let's say a Firefox that's uh, hanging up because everybody in their in the world is trying to update Firefox, for instance, and it's hanging up and you just need to temporarily get through this. You can click this box right here and allow it to scan. And it starts with um, scanning for different mirrors. You can also flip this over by clicking the arrow key. 
So I'm going to pick um, one of these other places. Let me click on Berkeley and hit apply. And you'll get a blue box in my case because of the theme I'm using uh, that your configuration changed. Please update your cache, your package manager. Then I hit OK and it goes through an update. Then I can leave it like this for a second. Wait till it finishes. Open this back up and let's say I have Firefox sitting here. Hit install updates. And once it completes its process, I can go back in here and reopen this box. And then if I wanted to set that back to Mint, all I do is restart default and do another APT update. This is how you can change that. If you have some additional repositories installed, they'll be listed here. I have Brave, Google, and Opera, for instance. I'm not going to click the authentication keys. So this is your software sources. Now, one thing it doesn't list in here, you'll see Mint, Debian, Brave, Google, and Opera. It does not list Flatpak software. This is where Flatpak comes from. It comes from flathub.org. Flatpak software is found here. So if you are installing something, um, I don't know, we'll find something in here that, uh, you know, you, you want to install. Um, let's try some games maybe. Do a search for a game. I don't even know what that is. But let's see if that's available. If I hit the install key, it's going to send me a link. It'll be sitting in your download folder. So I'm going to close this and go on to my file manager. And I have my hidden files turned on, so I'll turn that off. So let's go to downloads. And there's the link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on that link and wait till it opens. And uh, I need to authenticate myself. So or Bob, I should say. But take a look at that. It went directly to the same location inside of my software manager to find this piece of software from flathub.org. And I can hit install if I wanted that as a flat pack piece of software. All this is is a link. You could have done the same thing by searching for it, of course, in here. And you just scroll looking for it or use this keyword search. Anyways, folks, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video and I will say thank you for watching.